Let us pray. Sovereign God, your light came to nothingness and birthed all creation and then became flesh in this world, shining from manger, cross, and empty tomb, recreating all who know him to be the only true light. Bless us with the faith to find life in this light, now and forever, as we pray it in his holy name. Amen. We begin this Lenten series where creation began with light, God's light. It was the very first word God spoke. Let there be light. Way back in the book of Genesis, God spoke God's first word, let there be light. And it was so. And all the creation that followed wouldn't have happened without this first command of God, let there be light. For light is indispensable to life. And of course, God knew that. Try growing a house plant or a tomato plant in complete darkness. And as you've heard me say before, the only thing I like about the first day of winter is that the daylight begins to lengthen. And with the increasing light, my spirits are brightened. God created us to be lovers of light. During these days of Lent, our focus is on a far greater light, the light whose name is Jesus, the light that becomes flesh and blood, becomes human, the light by which all creation came into being. St. John, in his opening chapter, proclaims it with power and eloquence, in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things, all creation, that is, all things came into being through Him. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was the light of all people. And then that eternal truth, so central to the cross of Christ, to which Lent will again take us, the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not overcome it. And now our text, the words of Jesus, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The I am sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John are a play on words. God told Moses, in the book of Exodus that God's name was the name of God, I am. So with each of the seven I am sayings, Jesus is not only describing 
his attributes, but testifying that he is God. He is God in this case. Our text today, the incarnation of God's everlasting light. Let climaxes in Jesus' cross. There, the darkness appears to snuff out God's light for the world, God's light of life. Darkness seems to win that Good Friday. Jesus dies, and the devil takes the light. But three days later, Jesus is risen. His light, proven unquenchable, his light undefeated, resurrection life it is. Resurrection light it is. Everlasting light shining with love, with forgiveness, with hope, and yes, joy for us. And the promise of John's prologue rings true. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. God's light of love and life are God's final word. This light gifts, gifts us, gifts us for eternity. Yes, for certain it does, but also this light gives purpose and meaning to our every, our every day. And so let us welcome this light, embrace this light, cling to this light, and reflect this light, this light of the world, each day. With light, God began to bring all creation into being. And with God's light, Jesus, who is the light of the world, God fashioned redemption for us, for us and for all who claim this light and seek to follow him. For God's light, God's light, forever brings forth life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.